coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. As the province of Saskatchewan continues with its discussions of transformational change to deal with its own issue of debt, the future of education is now in the spotlight. Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall was back in his home riding on Monday for the official launch of the new Chinook Power Station in Swift Current. Well, if you haven't already rolled up your sleeve for an influenza vaccination, health officials are encouraging you to do so. Thanks for joining us here today. The clock is ticking away on the future of Saskatchewan school divisions, and local residents are being urged to voice their concerns. As the province of Saskatchewan continues with its discussions of transformational change to deal with its own issue of debt, the future of education is now in the spotlight. Back in December, Dan Perrin submitted his Educational Governance Review Report to the province. Options include reverting to one provincial school board from the current 28, converging to four regional divisions, or realigning the current boundaries. Options which have raised a red flag of concern with the Saskatchewan School Boards Association and its school boards across the province. Here in the southwest, the Chinook School Division, which is currently the second largest division in the province, held a press conference this week to voice its concerns over impending change and how this could affect local students. Liam Chufu is the Director of Education for Chinook and says moving towards one provincial school board is a great concern for a number of reasons. Certainly the, the flavor of local voice will be lost, absolutely. Um, in terms of uh, Chinook, we have some unique situations here. We provide uh, education to over half the Hutterite colonies in the province. I suspect there are a number of people in Regina and Saskatoon who have never heard of a Hutterite colony, let alone understand the culture involved in providing education there. We are also the most dispersed uh, school division within the province and some of the unique challenges that uh, are faced by our schools and our staff as a result of that probably aren't well understood. Likewise, we probably don't understand some of the First Nation Métis challenges that are in some of the other communities. So I'm not exactly sure how those uh, different components will all come to be a, a be voices that will be equally heard around the table. Chufu further adds that any radical changes will eventually trickle down to students in the classroom and hinder programs which have already been successful. Over the course of a couple, three years, I think you'll start to see different things erode at the classroom level. Uh, the supports that have been there for literacy and math and some of those things in the past may not be there. Certainly not in the same way that each of the 28 school divisions had done it in the past. So there'll definitely be some change in that regard and I think all of the momentum that we've gained provincially through the education sector strategic plan where we've had a nine percent increase over the last three years with grade three reading rates people are going to be more focused on how this new system is going to operate than the actual uh, provincial education of children and I think that will stall. In addition a centralized approach would affect the delivery of specialized services such as school psychologists an area of service which many on the board are concerned for. Right now our system, which was put in place 10 years ago, is working very well. Those specialists are delivered to children, uh, teachers tell me, in a time that usually is incredibly helpful to servicing the child, helping their education. And the parents report did not point out how we will implement. And I simply encourage the government to not move into a plan where there's no how. The Chinook School Division is encouraging community members to voice their concerns over potential changes to education through letter writing to their local MLAs and other provincial government officials. A message which the community of Weimark has taken to heart as its school community council hosted a public information night this week to further bring the issue to the spotlight. Over 50 area residents, school board representatives and Regina MLA Nicole Sawyer of the NDP attended to voice their concerns and hopes of keeping education local. Can the government say, okay, we amalgamated from 99 to 28, what have these actually saved per year? Have they saved anything or is it just a bunch of uh, hot air? A meeting which SAS party MLAs from the area were also invited to but did not attend, leaving those in the crowd with more questions than answers. I feel like bigger is not always better and this is probably one of those situations where where that would ring true. 
I'm also um, very nervous about the possibility of Weimark School being um, merged into one of the town schools. I, I really, I do think that there is good value in the small town schools. This school is very important to the community and to my kids and them being us in a rural school is really important to me and I want to do whatever I can to keep that possible for them and for the future children in this area. Potential changes to Saskatchewan education, which the opposition NDP question in the overall solution to lowering the provincial debt. It will result in uh, lesser um, accountability in lesser school divisions and as um, some concerns were expressed today that'll um, ultimately uh, impact and hurt the uh, level of education and the quality of education for our students and that it won't actually amount in any type of cost saving whatsoever. Concerned residents are encouraged to write a letter to their local MLA and other government officials by January 23rd. As Cabinet will be considering the parents report and any additional material in the coming weeks with a final decision on the future of education announced before or on Provincial Budget Day. For over 12 years, Southwest TV News has provided the visuals for the defining moments in our community. Support your community and help us to continue our work. Support our sponsors by watching the ads on YouTube and by clicking the ads on our website. Pennies per click, which will help us continue to bring you the award-winning news coverage you've come to expect from Southwest TV News. Initial groundwork is now underway at the site of the new Chinook power station outside of Swift Current. We have more in this report. Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall was back in his home riding on Monday for the official launch of the new Chinook power station in Swift Current. The 350 megawatt combined natural gas facility has been the talk of the town since the announcement for the project was made a few years ago. And now with initial site work underway, it's full steam ahead for the project. 500 construction jobs, uh, 24 full-time, very good full-time jobs, and Swift Current is going to feature very prominently in terms of the overall energy grid of the province. And again, we're doing a, a combined cycle natural gas plant, which is uh, this is obviously a fossil fuel uh, form of energy, but but very clean, uh, and um, it'll help back up our efforts to go to more renewables. We want to move to more wind and solar, but we need backup uh, base uh, load capacity, and this plant's going to help us do that. A project which will enhance the growing need for power across the province, with the Swift Current area the ideal location for the new plant. Two of our major pipeline customers, TransCanada and Enbridge, have facilities relatively close to Swift Current. And the load has come up over the last uh, five years significantly in the oil field and in the pipeline community. Uh, this was a logical place to put uh, the next uh, um, electrical generating station. And with approximately 500 jobs created for the construction of the project, the actual guaranteed number of contractors chosen from the Swift Current area will vary. No, there's, there's no guarantee, but uh, you know, I think where, where we can use local content, there's obviously ad advantages to SAS Power uh, in, in getting the work done quickly. Uh, we want to make sure we can get competitive pricing on the project, that's very, very important. But there is a, a lot of talent out there in the province and we have a lot of uh, good suppliers that uh, help us on all our major construction jobs and we look forward to that over the next year. With an increased number of contractors and other project representatives in the community over the next two years, the City of Swift Current eagerly awaits the opportunity for the business and residential sectors. We've seen a lot of investors uh, build different types of property. We're seeing duplexes, fourplexes, we're seeing, you know, Chelsea Green for an example right on, right up by the rail station and I think we've got more inventory today than we did just a few in uh, a few years ago so hopefully that'll help we also have more hotel rooms uh, than we did you know just a few short years ago I'm very hopeful that helps our city's also expanded our campground we've done some changes there we're seeing other campgrounds also do the same uh, you know getting ready for this this influx and for this boom so I, I'm hopeful that we'll uh, we'll be ready for it the design and construction of the combined cycle plant outside of Swift Current will be managed by Burns and McDonald Canada and is set for completion by late 2019.
break out of your usual routine and drop by the Art Gallery of Swift Current on January 25th for a unique dance performance. It's probably the most major performance piece we've been able to offer yet. The performance is funny and sad, dramatic, it's uh, mesmerizing. It's a major opportunity really to see the kind of performance and the kind of art making that you would see in uh, international uh, large centers. We're really looking forward to being able to present it here in the gallery. Dollhouse, an eye-opening spectacle. Get your tickets now. Influenza cases are on the rise across the country and you're being encouraged to get your flu shot. Well, if you haven't already rolled up your sleeve for an influenza vaccination, health officials are encouraging you to do so. Cases of influenza are on the rise across the country and are expected to further increase in the coming weeks. And according to provincial health representatives, this year's vaccine is on target with the current circulating strains of the flu. Typically in an influenza season, we start seeing the A type influenza first. And uh, this year, the predominant A that is being seen is the AH3N2. The good thing with that is that it's a component of this year's vaccine, so we, we do have a good match there, and uh, we've really tried to encourage people to get vaccine. Uh, but we have only about a quarter of our total population um, immunized, with more concentrations in uh, healthcare workers and in uh, seniors, especially in long-term care facilities where we have much higher percentages. But overall, um, uh, the public... Uh, covered is about a quarter of the population. We also have a good number of children covered, but it's that age in between of adults who uh, are not as keen. And in order to build herd immunity, vaccination numbers need to increase, as many individuals still look at the pros and cons of vaccinations. However, the sooner you get immunized, the better. And typically what we see in uh, uh, season is that once the activity increases and people start noticing that uh, their neighbors or friends are getting ill, that somehow is an impetus for them to now go in and get uh, their vaccination. So we anticipate we will see a bit more vaccination as we see more cases, but uh, prevention is better than cure. You don't want to be the case, you know, uh, having waited to get the vaccination and instead you should get the vaccination and not be the case. Influenza vaccinations are offered free across Saskatchewan to anyone ages six months and older and available through your public health office, numerous pharmacies and some physician offices. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.